seré sincero, nunca me imaginé llegar a esto. Por alguna razón que aún desconozco, pues me metí en este programa y aunque estuve muchas veces a punto de, de irme porque pensé que no, no era para mí esto, pues me quedé. I wanted to be a deacon because I just wanted to help other people. And being around so many men that um, were so much in love with God, it really inspired me. My brothers and sisters, once again, we gather around this altar in this sacred space. And we beg the Holy Spirit to come upon these men this day who will be ordained to the diaconate. We come to this altar ready to make Jesus present in this beautiful and unique way. And today, at this ordination ceremony, uh, we're doubly blessed in so many wonderful ways. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me. Before Cuando Dios llama y pues nos usa como instrumentos, lo único que nos queda es acogernos de él pedir su ayuda y dar lo mejor de nosotros. Este compromiso del diaconado va mucho más allá de servir a la comunidad. Es un compromiso muy grande con Dios. Segunda lectura. Lectura de la carta del apóstol San Pablo. Porque Dios nos dice que seremos luz para las naciones. Entonces es más que nada lo que yo tengo en la mente de recordar diariamente que soy representación de Dios. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandment... You know, Jesus knew exactly what I needed. I needed the witness of these men to show me that, that I could be a priest, that that was my, my true calling. And so the diaconate program was just a very instrumental step. Let those to be ordained deacon stand up. For the um, traditional deacon, I called Mr. Bonnet. Then for the um, permanent deacon, Call the following Pelagio Bautista Caoli, Daniel Carrera Camarena, Theodore Brian Clement, Andrew De Silva, Brian Patrick De Roche, Carl Phillips Imers, Stephen Cox Goodman. James Robert Inishitz, Joseph Ware Kidding, John Malvin Leninger, Edward Ray Long, Carlos Mare Naera, Joseph Anthony Mariolo Jr., Timothy Lee Papa, Gustavo Antonio Suarez, George Arthur Wilson Jr., Most Reverend, Holy Mother Church, ask uh, to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiring among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Since these are sons who are your relatives and friends are now to be advanced to the order of deacon, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. 
strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will assist the bishop and his priests in the ministry of the word, of the altar, of charity, and show themselves to be servants of all. With the help of God, they ought to go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. Now, my dear brothers, you are about to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from your heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. My dear brothers, our scripture readings today give us some insight into the ministry you will be ordained to undertake. The Lord responds to Jeremiah's fears as he faces the challenge the Lord presents to him. He tells Jeremiah that inexperience is no barrier. Fear of rejection can be overcome because the Lord is with you. God gives you the words to speak. God gives you the courage to speak them. St. Paul tells us that all the necessary gifts for the growth of God's kingdom on earth have been given to the community of believers. You certainly do not possess all of the gifts necessary, but the community does. And you, my sons, are recipients of special gifts, the gifts of teaching and ministry through the power of the Holy Spirit, which will be imparted to you in this ordination today. But remember, my dear brothers, these gifts are, again, just a few among the many gifts that the community possesses. Always seek to work with others, affirming and respecting their gifts, for together we advance the reign of God. Work with priests, work with brother deacons, work with religious and laity knowing that the Holy Spirit dwells in all of God's people and challenges them all to share their gifts in the community. And of course, John's Gospel affirms the basic element of all who are called to be ministers of the Lord. You must stay connected with Jesus. You must accept Jesus into your hearts as a person, not necessarily as a personality. Our world is filled with personalities. And personalities and individual people really don't have much of a relationship. Your relationship with Jesus must be with him as a person. You must stay connected with him. You must remain in his love. That is where you will get the strength to go far beyond what you think you are able to do. That is where you receive the joy and fulfillment that enables you to love all God's people as he loves you. He offers us that commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Believe me, brothers, that's not a suggestion. It's a command. You must be men of prayer. You must communicate with the Lord as friend, for the Lord communicates with you as friend in all occasions, in good times, in joyful times, and in difficult times as well. Since by your own free choice, you present yourselves for the order of the diaconate, you should be men of good reputation, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit, as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. As for you, Bruce, you will exercise your ministry committed to celibacy. Know that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. 
compelled by the sincere love of Christ, the Lord, and living in this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. You will free yourself more completely for the service of God and man and minister more effectively in the work of spiritual rebirth. This time of diaconate, as you continue to prepare for the order of priesthood, is a special time, a beautiful time, an affirming time, and a time for you to enter ever more deeply into your relationship with the Lord. Whether or not a man is called to holy celibacy, all of you deacons are to be firmly rooted and grounded in faith and show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and man, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope that is offered by the gospel. Now you are not only hearers of this gospel, but also its ministers. Holding the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. My dear, My dear son, sons, before, before you enter the Lord of the Athenic, you, you must declare before the people Lord your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition. Bruce, are you prepared to embrace the celibate state? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ for the Lord and for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and humanity? Do all of you Resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life. And in keeping with this spirit of what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God, and indeed for the whole world. One more question. Do all of you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are a minister at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise me and my successes respect and obedience? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. <coughs> Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successes? May God, who has begun the good work in you, Bring to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. 
May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to You promise me and my successors respect and obedience. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to book. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God, who has begun the good work, bring it to fulfillment. You promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May the Lord, who has begun the good work, bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to book. You promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to book. me and my successors respect and obedience. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. You promise me and my successors respect and obedience. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. May God, who has begun the good work, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us now pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. momento de emoción, de sentimientos, no me hacen dudar definitivamente, pero sí el hecho de que el compromiso que estoy asumiendo es muy grande. La responsabilidad que yo estoy adquiriendo es grande, porque ya no es mi familia solo, que yo voy a rendir cuentas ante Dios. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help 
what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> So in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, O Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar, and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, 
so that by the example of their way of life they may inspire the imitation of your holy people and may, in offering the witness of a clear conscience, they re remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The most challenging part is the academics. Is it so serious that you want to learn all of it? You want to know it thoroughly? So I would say that was by far the most challenging part, but there's plenty of support. The biggest support I had did come from my wife. She went to every class and that was a big deal. It made the marriage closer. It added to every aspect of my life. Everything just worked better the closer I moved to God. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ whose heralds you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose heralds you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive 
Receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. With your spirit. of uh, men uh, in the formation and also their family members inspired me a lot because I learned about different cultures, different, I would say, style in approaching the Catholic faith and the brotherhood that we have, the sharing of information, the sharing of, of belief give me a lot of encouragement. con la ayuda de Dios y con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo para que pueda yo hacer un buen trabajo humildemente y con amor especialmente con amor y humildad para que pueda ese trabajo ser agradable a los ojos de Dios For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten son high priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design of your son our Lord Jesus Christ
words of thanks. Certainly, uh, it has been a wonderful celebration this day, but would not have been possible without the cooperation of so many people. Uh, I'd certainly like to thank our Office of, of the Diaconate, uh, Deacon Andre, and all of his staff for all of the hard work that, that is done in terms of formation and preparation of, of the men for the Diaconate, and then all of the all of the support that, that that office gives to the men who are already serving as deacons in our parishes. So to the office of the diaconate and all those involved, many, many thanks. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, our formation program is so ably, uh, ably conducted by St. Leo's University. Uh, we're proud that we're able to have uh, top-notch theologians, professors who are able to teach in those programs and we're, we're really blessed and certainly uh, Abbott we are delighted with your presence and the fact that St. Leo's is really in, under your purview and, uh, and, and direction so thanks to St. Leo's University and all of the formation faculty. <laughs> of course today the ceremony would not be possible without the wonderful hospitality of uh, St. Michael's Parish, uh, uh, Father Fitzgerald, certainly, and all those who helped to make this possible, uh, certainly uh, St. Michael's Choir, and our musicians from Christ our King Parish, uh, and all of those who, who work so hard to make the liturgy uh, so beautiful, deacons who served, uh, and all those who, who prepared uh, the sanctuary and everything, and certainly to Father Babbitt, who disappears someplace um, but we wouldn't be able to manage without his making sure everything goes right. So thank you to all involved in the liturgy. <laughs> to our priests and deacons, so many of the priests who are the pastors of the, uh, of the parishes to which our deacons uh, are assigned, and so many of the priests who just have a, a relationship with our deacons, and we just wanted to be here and pray with them and for them on this day. To certainly to all of the deacon, brother deacons, who have come to, to support uh, these new men of the diaconate again. Thank you so very much for all that, your presence and, uh, and to our priests. A Saturday is not an easy way to get, a, uh, to get away from the parish. Not an easy day at all. There's so much that goes on. But I understand that you're here because uh, of your love for these who have been ordained. So thank you. Uh, for being here this day as well. Uh, certainly, we have to give thanks to the men themselves. Uh, your generosity, your willingness to answer the call of the Lord, to be here uh, and to offer yourselves to the service of the church uh, is indeed a, a wonderful act of generosity and a wonderful witness to all of us that there are those who are willing to hear the call of the Lord in their hearts and to do all they can to respond to it. So those who have been ordained this day, thank you so very much for offering yourselves to the church. But dear brothers, you don't do that alone. You come from families. And families are the ones who have supported you, uh, not only in terms of formation for the diaconate, but also in so many ways, who have formed you in faith, who have made it uh, just possible for you to easily, or perhaps even with some difficulty, respond to the Lord. <laughs> but nonetheless, their support, their affirmation, their presence to you uh, is, is indeed appreciated. Uh, parents who perhaps were the first formers of your faith in so many ways. So to all family members, we certainly give uh, words of thanks uh, for your support in making this day possible as well. <laughs> and then for 99% of you, uh, there's a special uh, woman in your life. Uh, I hope it's only 99% of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> But the wives, the wives uh, of, of the men who have been ordained today, uh, not only have they been a tremendous support, uh, but as they continue, uh, they will discover that that support is going to have to continue. 
because uh, the ministry, the ministry is demanding, and the ministry uh, is is certainly lived uh, in so many different ways, and and so the wives are the ones in so many ways who support uh, the permanent deacons. So I ask all the wives of these men who are hanging today to please stand. Just remain standing for a moment, if you will, ladies. Let us pray. May the Lord grant you all the graces that the Holy Spirit might impart upon you, that you might be a support to these men, that you might help and affirm them, and enthuse them with your support of their ministries. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bishop, we have uh, one more person to thank, is uh, our dear Bishop. He has been an inspiration for the last 10 years that he's in this diocese. He has been a great leadership, a very, very strong supporter of the diaconate, okay? And uh, I want to tell you that we truly love you. Pedir por todos ustedes y que hagan lo mismo por mí. Y pues yo seguiré haciendo esto. Es creo que ya parte de mi vida, pedir por la Iglesia de Jesús. Muchas gracias.